it's really frustrating when you get a clear shot at something and you can't take it for whatever reason. This pigeon in the tree, for instance, he's sat there clear as day. I've got a clear shot at him. Okay, there's a couple of twigs in the way, but I can thread the pellet through them, all right. But I can't take the shot because the twigs and trees behind don't provide a solid backstop. The pellet can easily pass through and I know that there's houses behind there and it's just not a safe shot. This one, on the other hand, is a perfectly safe shot. I'm shooting down into the ground, but uh, his head's bobbing about all over the place and he just won't hold still long enough for me to take the shot. If I wait a bit, or perhaps make a little noise to alert him so that he holds his head still, then I might get a chance. But I still can't take this one because I don't know where the gun's shooting at this distance. I'm zeroed for 25 yards and this thing's at about seven or eight, so I haven't a clue where the pellet's going. It's probably low because at that distance, the, the gap between the, the scope and the barrel makes quite a difference, but I don't know how low, so I don't know where to aim. That's why whenever I get my hands on a new gun, I like to find out exactly where it's shooting. That's what I'm going to be doing today with this. It's a BSA Meteor, a brake barrel spring gun, lovely little gun, almost identical to the one that I started off with when I was about 11 years old. I've made up this target box, which is full of stuff that's going to stop the pellet. And I'm going to start off by zeroing at 25 yards, because that's where I prefer to have the gun zeroed. Right, now we've got that zeroed at 25 yards, I need to know where the gun's shooting at all the other distances in between. I'm going to shoot at this same target at different distances, aiming dead centre of the target every time, then I can see where it's shooting at each distance and draw up a little diagram for myself that I can refer to later. Well, there we are, job done. And you can really start to see the beginnings of the trajectory here. We're starting below the, below the line of sight, coming up through it, rising above it, falling back into the line of sight and then starting to drop away and it will continue to drop away as the range goes on. So I now have a really clear understanding of the trajectory of this rifle and I can, I can start to make estimates of where I need to aim off. So that pigeon, I better watch out next time because I know exactly where I've got to aim for him. Now, I don't know about you, but I find this sort of thing slips my mind very quickly and it's best to write it down and keep it with the rifle. Now, a good way I've found of doing that is to write it on this cloth tape, sniper tape they call it, and then stick that on the butt of the rifle and then it's always there when you need it.